Hello everyone, my name is Tim and today I'm going to be going over money management 101 because it doesn't matter how much you make if you don't get to keep it. So I'm going to help you learn how to make a budget by determining exactly how much you spend every month, uh, either through a website like Mint or just making an Excel spreadsheet, which if anyone is interested in not willing to do that themselves, uh, let me know and I can make a spreadsheet that you all can use. I'll post it in another video and I'll make sure to notate that or I might make a Patreon and make it available through that. It depends on how much response I get. But besides that, I'm also going to tell you three different methods on how you can get rid of your debt and ways to pay it off quicker or at least ways to manage it where you don't get into more debt and also going to be going over just a quick way of handling credit cards because credit card debt is a major pitfall for anyone i found that out when i was 18 i got into credit trouble and it took me a couple years to get out and figure out how to use credit cards correctly and i'll go over anything else that might be included including student loans car loans all that will be included in how to make a budget and then how to get that debt paid off so that way you can be debt free and not have basically a rift in your life because the debt creates a problem to where you are always going to be a slave to that debt until you get that debt paid off. So if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below. I'm also going to be including a link to my Discord, which you can join for free. And starting tomorrow, August 2nd, 2021, I am going to be putting in every day on my Discord under the stock channel uh, some stocks that have the potential to make profit if you buy them. I'm going to be listing the stock tickers, a purchase price uh, for what you should buy them at, and also a stop loss in case the stock does go down and also a sell order for when you want to take profit when the stock goes up. Now I do want to advise you that I have had about 50-50 success rate on the stocks I've chosen but the nice thing is that the successes that I've had, the winners, have more than made up for the losses that I've had with the ones that haven't gone the way I wanted them to go. So hope you enjoy the video. I hope you have a great day and good luck in the stock market. So the first thing you're going to have to do in order to manage your money is to know exactly where every dollar and every cent is going. This entails making a detailed budget. Uh, I use mint.com as mine. I like being able to link my accounts and be able to see, for instance, when there's a balance on my credit card. That way I can pay it off immediately. I can see how much my 401k is worth at that particular time, how much my investments are worth at that particular time. But the biggest thing I like about it is the ability to make a budget and set a goal for paying off debt. I have one debt that I'm still working on paying on um, because me and my wife, well, let's put it this way, I had a hard time saying no to my wife so a couple of years ago, and so we got into a lot of debt. And I had to get a debt reconsolidation loan in order to get all that paid off and consolidated into one loan. And so that's the loan I have now. It was originally for 18000 And now, after the payment goes through tomorrow, it's going to be at around 8500 left. So I'm going to be working hard. I've been doing overtime at my job. And... I'm going to be putting every spare dollar towards that loan. I want to get paid off by May of next year. That is including using my bonuses and a portion of my income tax for that. So like I said, you can either use Mint or you can make a spreadsheet. And it's basically the same if you're not comfortable with having your account information on a website. An Excel spreadsheet will work just fine. You just have to be completely honest. I, have for instance, figured out my income by taking my net pay base at 40 hours, not including overtime, after all the deductions and taxes are taken out. And 
and I multiply that by two because I get paid bi-weekly. So that is what I put for my income and my paychecks. Now anything above that amount because of my overtime is going straight towards the loan. But this way I have a accurate method of budgeting and it lets me figure out exactly how much I'm going to be spending that month. So even though I don't drive all that much right now because I work from home, I do have my auto insurance that is set to one specific credit card and that credit card is only used to pay the auto insurance. This is the secret to using credit cards, at least in my opinion. You set a credit card that you have, once you have it paid off that is, to one specific bill, then you cut up the credit card and you just pay that off automatically at the end of the month and you don't have to pay a cent in interest. So that's what I do with my car insurance. It's tied to one rewards credit card and then it gets automatically charged to that credit card and then I know what day that gets charged. So then the next day when it goes onto the credit card, I pay it off immediately. And then of course I have set aside about $50 for gas. And that's changes somewhat month to month depending on how much I drive. Uh, for instance, in July, I didn't drive all that much. So I actually put the majority of that $50 towards my loan at that point. I also have my internet bill, which is also my TV and internet combined. Though I do get a $50 stipend from my employer for working from home for my internet. So technically, I only really pay about $16 out of pocket, but I still put the full 66 there because it's just an extra $50 I get on my paycheck every month. I do have my cell phone bill. I have three lines on it, which is why it's, it's so expensive, even though I did pay down my phone uh, completely this last month in July, so that is going to be going down by around $25. So, and then another couple months, I'll have the last phone that I'm paying on will be paid off, and that will go down about $30 to $40. So a couple months from now, my cell phone bill will be less than $100 a month, since the majority of that is from paying monthly payments on cell phones. These are my utilities. Uh, that is, it changes every month, but I just change these depending, and then I sometimes have to rearrange my budget a little bit. My wife does typically pay half the utilities, but just in case she doesn't for some reason or another, I put the full amount here, and then once she does pay me, I will change that. And then I would put that extra money either towards another section of my budget that needs it, or I will put that straight towards the loan. So that way, that loan gets paid off even faster, assuming she helps me with the utilities, which she normally does. But for right now, I always assume that she will not. Same thing with the water bill. And both of these are tied to their own credit cards, each one to a different card. And each one of them are rewards cards, cash back. And so once these are billed to those cards, I pay those off immediately. And then once I have enough money cashed back, I will either, if I can, have the money sent to my bank account and that will go towards a loan. Or if I can't, I'll put a statement credit and that will help me put a that much more money towards the loan the next month because I'll be less money I have to pay for that utility because I'll be a credit. Now I do have some things I like for entertainment. I have Hulu, which is included on my cell phone, so I don't have to pay for that. But I do have Paramount Plus, i.e. CBS app. That is $6 a month. And right now I'm enjoying watching some shows on that, but once those shows are canceled, I will be canceling that. I also play EverQuest and Final Fantasy XIV. Now be aware these are not needs, so if I'm ever at a time where I need to cut the budget, those three things, CBS, EverQuest, and Final Fantasy XIV, will be the first to go. Because as much as I like playing them, they are not required for me to survive. And paying off my debts are more important. But I do need to have some relaxation time also. So that's why those are still there. 
I do have about $110 for groceries, but that's for me alone because my wife typically buys her own groceries. She's on a keto diet, so she has to buy special types of food. So we agreed to separate our grocery bill. I do have $38 in charity I give every month. That's for tithing for church. This, is, of course, is my mortgage payment since I do own my house now. I am not putting any extra money down on my mortgage at this time because I am looking to pay off the loan first. After that's done, I'll probably put an extra $50 to $100 a month towards the mortgage, but right now that is not a high priority for me because my equity in that is still going up. Now for miscellaneous expenses, I do have about $50 set aside for just stuff that comes up or me and my wife want to go out to dinner one night during the month then that will count towards the miscellaneous and that's just there because you have to have some type of life even though you're sacrificing a lot to get your debt paid off you have to have some type of life you just have to um, i have a dog and cat so for my pet foods i have sixty dollars that's per month that's for litter and for uh, cat food. My wife is responsible for the dog, so she buys all the supplies for the dog. And I also have $40 for my vaping. I have been actual cigarette-free for about three years now. And I just use an electronic cigarette. And this is the supplies I have for a month. And that won't last me that much. And then down here is my goal. That's conquer my loans. So the minimum payment is actually less, like the minimum payment is $356, and I am right now scheduled to pay $562, and that will allow me to have this debt paid off by, according to this, February 1st of 2023, but like I said before, I'm going to be putting all my extra money, including my bonuses and tax return into the loan to get that paid off much faster. So I want to get that paid off by May of 2022. Now there are several ways to get your debt paid off. If you have student loans, car loans, credit card debt, and any other type of debt that you might have, you will, like I said, need to list everything out. There are several methods you can use. There is what's called the avalanche method, which is where you take the interest or APR from each one and you list them by the highest interest or APR down to the lowest. And you don't pay attention to the balances at all. You don't care about what's, well, how much is due on it or what the balance is. You just look at the interest or APR and then you pay the highest interest or APR down first. That will allow you to save the most money in the long run. And there's also a snowball method, which was popularized by Dave Ramsey. That is where you do the same thing. You list them in, by interest in APR order and also by the balance level. You know, in this one, you typically go by balance more than APR. But I like putting the APR there anyway, just so I know. But in the snowball method, you take the smallest balance and you... Pay it off first while you pay the minimum balance, the minimum payments on the rest of your debts, and then you go to the next highest balance and you take the payment that you had from the smallest and you add it to the minimum balance from that one until that's paid off, and you keep doing that until you get to the highest balance. And the last method that you can possibly do, if you you can do what I did. If you have a decent amount of credit, around 630 score, you can get a debt reconciliation loan. And you, you probably won't get the greatest rate, I'll be honest with you. You'll probably get 16 to 17, maybe 18% interest. But what you can do is you will be able to pay all of those debts off. Basically consolidate everything to one payment. You make that payment for five or six months, and then once your credit score goes up to around 700, which it should if you were able to pay off all your debts using the debt reconciliation loan, then you can at that point get another loan that will cover the balance of what your debt reconciliation loan is currently. And this is the key part. You don't want to get a loan for more than what you owe on the loan that you had before. You just want to get enough to 
cover the loan itself and that's including any origination fees or anything like that just get a loan that will cover that and since your credit score is higher you will have a lower interest rate or lower apr on the loan and be able to save money on interest that way so that is one tip and like i said for credit cards i'm a big fan of rewards cards but my method to use them is i only keep one rewards card on me that's my city double cash I use that for my everyday purchases and all my other rewards cards are tied to one single bill. They are set to auto pay and then I pay them off before the end of the month. And that way I don't have to pay any interest, not a single penny in interest. And that allows me to pay bills I'm going to have to pay anyway. And I get rewarded either by cash back, travel rewards or other perks. I do not get any kind of credit cards that have a yearly fee to them though. I only get the ones that you don't have to pay a yearly fee and also if they have a reward that if you spend like 500 to 1000 dollars they'll give you 2 or 300 maybe 500 dollars back free. I love those type of cards and that way I will instead of using my city double cash I will use that card primarily for that time frame until I reach that goal and I make sure it's paid off every month before the end of the month so I don't pay any interest and then once I recruit that reward I will tie that to a another bill that's due and then I will go back to using my city double cash card so this is money management 101 if you follow these you should be able to get your debt paid off and be able to actually keep the money that you make instead of making everyone else around you rich thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video like i said before at the beginning if you enjoyed this and found it helpful don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below that way youtube can show it to more people and more people can have a better understanding of their finances and money Again, I will be including a link to my Discord channel in the description below. It is completely free to join. And starting tomorrow on Monday, the 2nd of August, 2021, I will be adding my stock choices every day that I find one that is possible to be a winner. Like I said, this isn't a guarantee. It is possible that these stocks will go down. But I will also list a stop loss to where you don't lose too much of your investment into these stocks and when it does go up and you have a winner it will more than make up for the losers because typically the stop and sell for a winner is twice as much as the stop loss typically will be percentage wise hope you all have a great day good luck in the stock market